Hey folks, welcome to this Master That Solo lesson. In this lesson I'm going to show you how to play a Hetfield solo to Nothing Else Matters from the Black Album. Two reasons. One, because, you know, Black Album's 30 years old this year, so it'd be pretty cool to look at something from it. And two, it's one of my favourite uh, Metallica solos, actually. And of course, being played by Hetfield rather than Hammett, it's a little bit of a kind of different kind of situation. So I'm in standard tuning for this. Um, Nothing Else Matters is in the key of E minor, and we have a first phrase that sounds like this. Okay, so this first little phrase starts with a little kind of percussive tee up. I'm doing like a little down up, just mute the strings up around about this 12th fret area. And I'm doing like a down up on them just to kind of lead into this bend, this double stop bend. Then what I'm going to play is I'm going to be playing 15th fret that B string with the third finger and then 14th fret the G string with the middle finger. And what I'm going to do is bend the note up on the G string a whole step. So this cool uh, kind of double stop bend lick. Then what I'm going to do is then release that bend and hit 12, uh, 14th fret that G string with the middle finger. So without that uh, B string in there, up down whole step bend, and then play 12th fret of that G string with some vibrato. Okay, so so far I have this. Yeah. Then what we're going to play is. Basically, he's kind of playing 14, 12 in the G string here, but he hits like a percussive sound again. So you almost hear um, just a percussive sound and then 12th fret of that G string there. So I kind of play, I'm kind of fingering the 14th fret there with the fourth finger. You don't really hear it, but you'd hear that 12th fret of the G string there with the middle finger. Then I'm going to play this, this little melodic fragment here. So I'm going to do a hammer and pull off 11 to 12, back to 11 on the G string, with the 1st to 2nd finger. Then I play 14th fret of that D string with the 4th finger, back up to 11th fret of the G, and then I'm going to slide with the middle finger, 12 to 14th fret. Some vibrato on that note there. Okay, so slowly that opening phrase sounds like this. Next phrase sounds like this. So the next phrase, we're going to be playing all our 16ths here. Now the one thing to note about Nothing Else Matters, it's in the time signature of 6-8. So you're counting like a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's your kind of count. That's a kind of pulse in the, the 1 and the 4. So if you're going to split that up into 16ths, you've got this 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and. You've got those kind of 6... Uh, 12 notes basically. So what he's playing here is a phrase that's all kind of 16ths. He starts off with a little tee up of 12, 14 back to 12 in that G string. Then I'm going to play a bend, whole step bend, 14th fret that G string. That lasts for kind of uh, one of your 16ths. And then I'm going to bar across the 12th fret of the B and E for the next T note. So you have this kind of six notes like that. With two groups of three in a row. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is a pull off on that uh, B string 15 to 12 and then play 15th fret on that uh, G string there. I use the fourth to first finger there. Yeah. Then I'm going to play the next three notes is 12th fret that B string and then 15 14 on the G string. Like that. Okay. So slowly that kind of goes like this. Okay, then what I'm going to do in the next bar is I'm going to do 12th fret of that G string with the first finger, quick up and down bend. It's almost like a almost like vibrato, but he's bending up and down. And then I'm going to play 14th fret the D string after. And then with that third finger, I'm going to bar right across the B and the G strings there at the 14th fret too. So you have this. Yeah. Then there's a rest there, so what I do is mute with our right hand. And then I've got this little double stop lick. I play that 14th fret G and B strings with the third finger. Then I bar the 13th fret with the middle finger at the B and G strings, 13th fret. And then I play 12th fret the G string. Kind of end of the phrase. 
plenty of vibrato in that bit there. So that bar kind of sounds like this. Uh, okay, I mean you put it together with the first bit slowly, sounds like this. Okay, and once you've done that vibrato on that 12th fret, slide off for the next phase, which sounds like this. So arguably this is the trickiest phrase of the solo. What I'm going to be doing is playing um, on the beat here. So we've got our 6, 8, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And what I'm doing in these six notes is I'm going to slide to the 15th fret of the high E string there. And I'm using my third finger here. This will become uh, apparent why. So I'm sliding up to 15th fret, then I play 14th fret of that high E string. But try and give a little, little bit of vibrato there. So what I'm doing is I'm just pushing up a little bit in the string. Just to give it a wobble. Then I play 12th fret the B string there. So that's my first three notes. Then we're pretty much going to repeat the, the 15, 14 again. But then a slide, grace note slide 15 to 17th fret that high E string. So that should be kind of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Like that. So that's 17th fret and lands on the beat, yeah. Okay. Now from here, my third finger is slid up to that 17th fret. What I'm then going to play is 2nd fret, uh, sorry, 2nd finger playing the 15th fret of the high E string there with a staccato note. So I kind of play it and then cut it short. Because then I'm going to go... Okay, so once I've done that staccato note, I'm going to do a hammer and pull off 1st to 2nd finger, 14th to 15th to 14th fret. And this is the tricky bit here, once I've done that, I slide to the 12th fret with that first finger. But what I want to do is anticipate the fact I'm going to play 12th fret the B string after it. So when you do the slide, try and move the finger so it's not right in the tip, but maybe more on the pad. If you want, you can think of doing the hammer and pull off by already maybe barring or having a sensation of barring the B and E strings at the 14th fret. Okay, so what? I've got my hammer and pull off. Slide and then I play 12th fret that B string. And then I've got my little 15, 14 in the high E string. And then 12th fret of that B string with vibrato. So slowly that phrase sounds like this. Okay. Next phrase sounds like this. So this phrase starts again with a little tee up, 12, 14, 12 in the G string, but you might want to play this with the first and second finger back to first. Because then what we're going to do is this double stop bend, just like we did at uh, the start of the solo. The thing that's tricky about this is you do the hold the, the 14th fret the G, 15th fret the B string, do a bend up and down. But when you release, you want to release kind of the third finger at the same time. So what you hear, is basically with that release the bend, then I pull off to 12th fret with the first finger in the G string, then I'm going to play 14th fret at that D string with the second finger. Yeah, so it's kind of an awkward little combination of notes. Tricky to do slow actually. Yeah. Then I have a classic little blues lick. So I play 12th fret at that G string. Now I'm going to use my third finger here now to bend the whole step, 14th fret at the G string. Bar the 12 at the B and E. Okay. Then I'm going to hit 15th fret that uh, B string there twice, but I hit once. The second time I bend up a whole step with it. Okay. And this is where we have our sustained note. So once you've done that bend, you've basically got two bars of 6 8. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Release the bend in that six. Then I'm going to do hammer and pull off um, from 12 to 15 back to 12. Now, because of the sustained note, you don't have to kind of pick that note. And what you notice I'm doing here is what James Hetfield does. Once you've done that bend, you can palm your pick and hold the G and the high E strings with the 
the thumb and the index finger so they don't ring out when you least do that. And then from here, to the 12th fret, I'm going to slide to the 7th fret, to the 5th fret, hammer to the 7, pull off back to the 5. It's all kind of one movement now. And because of the, the gain and sustain in the note, it kind of rings through. So that bit slowly from the bend. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So when I release that bend, I pull off, hammer to 15 back to 12, slide to seven, and then quick slide to five, hammer to seven back to five. Yeah. So that last little phrase, slowly, sounds like this. Not too much vibrato in those notes in the recording, but just to let the note kind of sing a little bit more, you might just add a subtle bit of vibrato. Okay, and that's it. Yeah, awesome solo. Uh, not too long. You know, kind of perfect solo for the song. I think it has such an impact is because you're building up to that point. It has this kind of uh, crescendo effect, and then you kick up, kick in with that. You know, which always sounds awesome when you've got a kind of build up to it. So have fun with it guys. If you want access to uh, the Helix patch that I've created for this or the extended lesson where you get actually the, the solo backing track and you get the animated tab for this, please check over, uh, come over to the Massive Guitar uh, Patreon group and you can check that out there. That's available to patrons. As I said, you'll get uh, tone tips and uh, the Helix patch, how I got the tone, the gear that Hetfield used, that sort of thing. Uh, but of course, you can also get access to the free tab as usual on the webpage or over Patreon as well. Uh, if you've not subscribed or you know this is the first time here, guys, please hit that uh, subscribe button, hit the notification bell as well so you're kept up to date with things. And you can also follow me on uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook and Twitter as well. Okay, so have fun with that, guys. Awesome solo. And I'll see you soon.